What's up everybody? My name is Matt Bolin. I'm 22 years old and I am a student at Boise State University. For my job to pay the bills, I am a pin setter mechanic. Uh, if you've ever wondered how a pin setter machine operates, well, today I'm going to give you guys the basic operation. So hang with me. So before we get carried away, we will be talking about seven main components of pin setter operation. Number one, the ball pit area. Starting here, you'll see a ball cushion assembly. This assembly absorbs the impact of the thrown bowling ball. The pins that have been knocked over find their way to the transport band, which is a large band moving on two rollers that pulls the pins backwards to the elevator. As for the ball, the transport band guides it into the ball accelerator. Number two, the ball accelerator. The ball accelerator is mounted between two pin setters. It returns balls to the bowler on either lane through the ball return. As it enters the ball door, it goes onto a track. A large flat belt, known as the ball accelerator, propels the ball forward through the ball return back to the bowler. Number three, the pin elevator. The pin elevator receives pins from the transport band. It then raises them up to the distributor in preparation for setting them on the lane. The elevator is equipped with 14 shovels that lift one pin per shovel. The shovels are moved by two parallel chains that are powered by the distributor motor. As the pin is loaded onto the distributor, it rolls off the pin shovel to the pin guide wedges, which turn each pin so they always go on the green belts bottom first. Number four, the distributor. As the pins leave the guide wedges, they enter the distributor area. They come across the shark fin, which pushes the pins onto separate distributor lanes so they can find an empty pin station. As the pin finds an empty station, it falls into its retaining belt. This unlocks the flap in the distributor lane and allows pins to move by freely onto the next available station. Any pins that do not find a station will return down to the transport band through the overflow chute. Those pins are then recycled back through the elevator system and back up onto the distributor. Number five, the setting table. The setting table detects for standing pins after a ball has been rolled. It closes spotting tongs to pick up any remaining standing pins. It also loads pins from the distributor to set them on the lane for a new frame. The pins are in a horizontal position when the table is loading pins. When the table goes down, all 10 pins are rotated to a vertical position to set the new pins on the pin deck. The pin holders have a pin detector plate on the bottom that is pushed upward by the top of a pin, letting the machine know whether to either set the pin or pick it back up with the spotting tongs. After the pins have been set, the setting table moves back upward towards the horizontal position to load new pins from the distributor. Number six, the sweep wagon. The two functions of the sweep wagon are to prevent pins from rolling forward onto the lane and to clear unwanted pins that have been knocked down. The sweep is initiated when a ball crosses the lane opto to hit the pins. The setting table then comes down and picks up the standing pins with the spotting tongs the sweep then clears the unwanted knocked over pins, otherwise known as the deadwood. Those pins return back to the transport band so they can be recycled to the elevator. Number seven, the drive frame assembly. Last is the drive frame assembly, which consists of three motors. The front motor operates the distributor, transport band, and the elevator. The center motor runs the sweep, and the rear motor raises and lowers the setting table. Without these motors, the machine would not be able to function properly. I hope that after watching, you have a better understanding of pin setter operations. Thank you for watching, and hopefully we can end this video on a strike.